welcome students to Joy Learning TV. We are going to continue our lesson on measurements. And this time, we are going to look at density. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate the density for regular and irregular objects. And in our previous lesson, we also look at what regular objects are and what irregular objects are. Now, let's recap some of the things we did in our previous lesson. We looked at some physical quantities, which includes mass, volume, and density. And since we are going to look at density today, we are going to focus our attention more on mass and volume. We also learned that mass is the amount of matter or substance that makes up an object. The SI unit for mass is the kilogram. And we also look at some of the instruments that can be used to measure mass. We have the electronic balance, the compression balance, the lever balance, the beam balance, and so on and so forth. On your screen, you can see some of the instruments, and I believe you can identify them as we did in our previous lesson. So just look at them, and I know you can do that. So these are some of the instruments that can be used to measure mass. We also look at what volume is. We learn that volume is the space that a substance or a shape occupies or contains. Volume is the space that a substance or shape occupies or contains. The SI unit for volume is the cubic meter. And some of the instruments that can be used to measure Volume includes the measuring cylinder, the beaker, the syringe, the pipette, the burette, and so on and so forth. And on your screens are some of the instruments that are used to measure volume. And I believe you can identify them. So look on your screens and see some of these instruments, which you have seen already. And I believe you can identify them. Very good. Now let's proceed. When we talk of density, what comes into your mind? Now, when you talk of density of a substance, now, don't forget, density is a physical quantity, and it is also a derived quantity. And it is the heaviness of an object or a substance. Taking into consideration the mass and the volume of that substance. So, we can define density as the mass per unit volume of a substance the mass per unit volume of a substance. The average density of an object equals its total mass divided by its total volume. So mathematically, we can express density as mass divided by volume we can express density as mass divided by volume. The SI unit for density is kilogram per cubic meter. Kilogram per cubic meter. It can also be expressed 
in grams per cubic centimeter. Grams per cubic centimeter. Now, let's look at how to calculate the density of a regular object. And when we talk of regular objects, they are objects with clearly defined dimensions, which has the length, the width, the height, and other quantities on that object. So let's follow the steps below. So one, to calculate the density of a regular object, first we have to determine the mass of that object. And to determine the mass, we can use instruments like the beam balance, the lever balance, the electronic balance, and so on and so forth. The second step is to determine the volume of the object from measurements made by means of tape measure, the vernier calipers, micrometer screw gauge, and so on and so forth. And using the appropriate formula to get the volume. So for example, to get the volume of a cuboid, we multiply the length times the width times the height. And that will give us the volume of a cuboid. Then the third step is to divide the mass of the object by the volume of the object. After getting the numerical value, we, we have to add the unit, the appropriate unit. So don't forget, when it comes to density, if your mass is given in grams, the corresponding volume should be in cubic centimeters. If the mass is given in grams, the corresponding volume should be in cubic centimeters. If the mass is given in kilograms, then its corresponding vol volume should be in cubic meters. Cubic meters. So let me ex uh, explain this further. If the mass given is ten grams and the volume given is five cubic centimeters, then the density of the object that has the mass to be 10 and volume to be 5 will be 5. So when we divide 10 by 5, we'll get 2. So the value or the unit for the density here will be 2 grams per cubic centimeters. 2 grams per cubic centimeters. So whenever the mass is given in grams, the volume should be in cubic centimeters. Now, let's look at this also. If it happens that the mass is given in kilograms, then the corresponding volume should be in cubic meters.
So anytime mass is given in kilograms, volume is given in cubic meters. Anytime mass is given in grams, volume is given in cubic centimeters. So don't forget this. Because if you get the unit wrong, which is very important, then the, you get your final answer to be wrong. Because it is the unit that makes the value density. If you calculate everything and you get 2, and you write the number 2, and you don't attach any unit to it, then you lose mark for your final answer. Now let's look at an example. So look on your screens and look at the questions on the screen. Now it says, a rectangular wooden block with a length of 10 meters, width of 5 meters, and a height of 2 meters, has a mass of 50 kilograms. Calculate the density of the wooden block. Calculate the density of the wooden block. So we have a wooden block which is having a length of 10 meters, a width of 5 meters, and a height of 2 meters. So to get the volume, we have to multiply the three dimensions. That is length times width times height. And when you multiply 10 times 5 meters, that will give us 50 meters multiplied by 2 meters. And that will give us 100 cubic meters. 100 cubic meters. Don't forget, if you don't bring the cubic meter unit, you get your answer to be wrong. So now that we'll be able to calculate the volume of the wooden block, Let's look at how to get the density of the wooden block. Now, if you look at the question once again, it says a rectangular wooden block with a length of 10 meters, width of 5 meters, and a height of 2 meters, has a mass of 50 kilograms. Has a mass of 50 kilograms. So, So our length is 10 meters, our width is 5 meters, and the height being 2 meters. And this will give us 100 cubic meters. So we have our volume, we have our mass. So we are going to use the two values here to calculate our density.
So to get the density of the wooden block, we have the mass of the wooden block divided by the volume of the wooden block. So our mass is 50 kilograms divided by volume of 100 cubic meters. Now quickly, we know that 50 can divide itself once and it can divide 100 two times. So we are going to get half, which is the same as 0 0.5. So therefore, our density will be 0 0.5 kilograms per cubic meters. 0 0.5 kilograms per cubic meters. So the illustration is on your screen. Now, let's look at how to calculate the density of an irregular object. You remember in our previous lesson, we learned about irregular objects. You don't have definite dimensions. So it is very difficult to measure them. So let's go through the steps. So the first step is to determine the mass of the object by means of beam balance, electronic balance, the lever balance. All these instruments are instruments which are used to measure the mass of an object. Then the second step is to de determine the volume of the irregular shape or object. And by this, we can use the measuring cylinder, the overflow can, or the displacement can. And to use the measuring cylinder, first of all, we, we get a measuring cylinder, we put in, or we fill it, up to the middle level or half full, then we record the initial volume of water in the measuring cylinder. And after that, we drop our object into the cylinder gently. And then we record the second volume or the final volume, after which we subtract the initial volume from the final volume. So when we get the volume of the irregular object, our next step is to divide the mass of the irregular object by the volume of the irregular object, after which we state the appropriate unit or we add the correct unit to the value to get our density. So let's look at this example. It says, a piece of stone weighs 54 grams. A piece of stone weighs 54 grams. When it was put into a merging cylinder containing water, the water level rose from the 40, 45 cubic centimeter mark to the 75 cubic centimeter mark. What is the density of the stone? What is the density of the stone? So with this question, if you analyze it carefully, for the mass is already stated, which is 54 grams. But then the volume, it says the water level rose from the 45 cubic centimeter mark to the 75 cubic centimeter mark and therefore there is a difference and that difference will be the volume of the stone. So let's look at the solution. So the mass of the stone is 54 grams and therefore to get the volume of the stone we have to subtract the initial volume from the final volume. We take the initial volume from the final volume to get the volume 
of the stone. Of course, the stone being an irregular object. So 75 cubic centimeters minus 45 cubic centimeters. And that will give us 30 cubic centimeters. Now that we have our volume, we can proceed to calculate the density of the stone. And to get the density of the stone, we have to divide the mass of the stone by the volume of a stone. So the mass being 54 grams, and then the volume being 30 cubic centimeters. So we divide through by the number 3. And that will give us 18 grams being divided by 10 cubic centimeters. Or we can say that 3 will go into 54 18 times and 3 can go into 30 10 times. So when we divide 18 by 10, we'll get 1.8. Therefore, the density of the stone is 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. So look on your screens and let's quickly solve the following exercises. Number one, a lump of gold has a density of 6 grams per cubic centimeter and a volume of 24 cubic centimeters. Calculate the mass of the gold. Calculate the mass of the gold. Number two, a container of volume 50 cubic centimeters is filled with water to the brim to the brim meaning very full no space left calculate the mass of water in the container if the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Number three, a box with a volume of 1,000 cubic meters is filled with sand to the brim, very full. If the density of sand is two kilograms per cubic meters, Calculate the mass of sand in the box. Calculate the mass of sand in the box. Then the last question, number four. A piece of stone of mass 100 grams was gently lowered into a measuring cylinder containing water. If the level of the water rose by 25 cubic centimeters, calculate the density of the stone. Calculate the density of the stone. So let's quickly solve this. I hope you are about to finish because these questions are not difficult. As time goes on, you will meet more difficult questions. So by now, you should be on number four. All right. So let's quickly go through the questions. So question number one. It says, a lump of gold has a density of 6 grams per cubic centimeters and a volume of 24 cubic centimeters. 
Calculate the mass of the gold. Calculate the mass of the gold. So this time, to get the mass of gold, we multiply the density of gold by the volume of gold. We multiply the density of gold by the volume of gold. So take notice of this. Anytime you are to find or calculate the mass of a substance, if you are given the density and then the volume, all that you have to do is to what? Multiply these two. You multiply the density and the volume to get your mass. So 6 grams per cubic centimeters multiplied by 24 cubic centimeters. So cubic centimeters will cancel out, leaving the gram. So 6 times 24 will give us 144 grams. Therefore, mass of gold is 144 grams which I believe you got it right. Let's proceed to our next question. Question number two. A container of volume 50 cubic centimeters is filled with water to the brim. Calculate the mass of water in the container. If the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter, 1 gram per cubic centimeter. So the volume of water is the same as the volume of the container because the container is full, it has been filled to the brim. So the volume of water is the same as the volume of the container, which is 50 cubic centimeters. Now, the mass of water is density of water multiplied by volume of water. Density of water multiplied by volume of water. So that is 1 gram per cubic centimeter multiplied by 50 cubic centimeters. 50 cubic centimeters. So obviously, when you multiply 1 by 50, the answer will be 50. Since cubic centimeters will cancel out, the final answer will be 50 grams. So our mass of water is 50 grams. Question number 3. A box with a volume of 1,000 cubic meters is filled with sand to the brim. Is filled with sand to the brim. If the density of sand is 2 kilogram per cubic meter, 2 kilogram per cubic meter, calculate the mass of sand in the box. Calculate the mass of sand in the box. So volume of sand is the same as the volume of the box. Since sand in itself is not fixed that you can measure, if you put the sand in the box, the sand will take the shape of the box. And since it is the box has been filled to the brim, if you are able to measure the dimensions of the box and you get the volume of the box, it is the same as the volume of the sand. So density of sand multiplied by volume of sand will be 2 kilograms per cubic meter times 1,000 cubic meters. So 2 times 1,000 will give us 2,000. And since the Cubic meters will cancel out. The unit will be kilograms. So mass of sand will be 2,000 kilograms. 2,000 kilograms.
Our final question. A piece of stone of mass, 100 grams, was gently lowered into a measuring cylinder containing water. If the level of the water rose by 25 cubic centimeters, calculate the density of the stone. Calculate the density of the stone. So since the water level rose by 25 cubic centimeters, obviously the volume of the stone will be 25 cubic centimeters. So to get the density of the stone, we divide the mass of the stone by the volume of the stone. So 100 grams divided by 25 cubic centimeters. And since 25 can divide 100 four times, our final answer will be 4 grams per cubic centimeters. 4 grams per cubic centimeters. Let's recap on what we've learned so far today. We've learned that density is the mass per unit volume of a substance. And that the average density of an object equals its total mass divided by its total volume. And density can be expressed mathematically as density equal to mass divided by volume. Mass divided by volume. And the SI unit for density is kilogram per cubic meter. It can also be converted to gram per cubic centimeter. So I hope you don't forget that anytime you are calculating density, if mass is given in grams, volume should be in cubic centimeters. If mass is given in kilograms, volume should be in cubic meters. We also look at how to calculate the density of a regular object and also how to calculate the density of irregular objects. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching and keep watching Joy Learning TV. See you next time for another interesting lesson in Integrated Science for JHS. See you. Thanks for watching again. Bye.